The Thunder look like they're not messing around tonight. They had a little bit of an edge to them as they get off the bus earlier on. And the game arrival, sponsored by Express. Dress like a pro. The state capital of Utah dramatically lit up on a beautiful night in Salt Lake City. Welcome, everyone, to a brand new season of NBA basketball. I'm sure you're as excited as all of us are here at 2K Sports as we get ready to start the season in style. Our broadcast team tonight, on one side, Greg Anthony. On the other side, Steve Smith. And on the sideline, David Aldridge. I'm Kevin Harlan. And now a look at the upcoming schedule for the Utah Jazz. On Friday, they'll go up against LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. Then on Saturday, they'll tip off a homestand starting with the Sacramento Kings. And let's go straight over to David Aldridge for a report before the tip-off. Hey, Dave. Well, small ball has become the trend in the NBA, but it might be more accurate to call it average ball. With defensive switching twice as common as it was five years ago, the demand is rising for players of average NBA height, and that's around six foot seven. Kevin, that's affected not just the big men, but the vertically challenged guys as well. Point forwards and big guards in demand. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. The entire offseason leading up to tonight, Steve, as a player, do you already know if your team uh, has a chance to be special this early? You know, Kevin, yeah, you do. And I think the teams that I've been on and teams that you see and saying we don't have a chance to win, you try to trick yourself. You're looking at management and ownership. Can we make a deal throughout right. this year to get us in, in contention? But you got to be realistic. You know the team that you don't have a chance to win their championship. So here's Oklahoma City's starting group. Gallinari and Adams, the combo out front. Chris Paul is out there with Gilgis Alexander. And it's Ferguson in at the three. And for the Jazz, Conley and Mitchell, the talented backcourt pair. Inside, we have Ingles and Gobert. And it's Bogdanovich in at the three, the small forward. No hesitation at all on the alley-oop. Saw his teammate with a path to the hoop. And bang, lobbed it right up there for him to finish. And he was ready for it when he elevated and made the catch. Conley against Paul. Malinari outside. Fires the three. Drains the three-pointer. When you're talking about Gallinari, he's always been a solid three-point shooter. Very consistent over the course of his career. Conley against Paul. Knocked away. Out of bounds. Oklahoma City takes possession. Now, Gilgis Alexander. Floats one up, and the layup is up and in. A nice little floater by Gilgis Alexander. Excels at scoring on the move. And about a minute gone here in the first quarter. And it's Mitchell with the ball for the Jams. It's a three-point game. Adams against Gobert. It's rebounded by Oklahoma City. And here is Paul. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. It's going to be on Rudy Gobert. This is where Chris Paul dominates, using the dribble drive to create offense and get himself to the line. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Falls for Paul. Well, we're now in the back end of what has been, Greg, an incredible career for Chris Paul. Perhaps no longer the undisputed best point guard in the game, but uh, still a top talent. And, and Chris Paul might not be the best point guard, but any team would be happy to have him. His efficiency and playmaking aren't going away anytime soon. And even though he's never been an overly athletic player, that aspect of his game still is strong as ever. Now here is Conley. 
passes it to Bogdanovich. And that's a foul called on Shea Gilgis Alexander. That's his first foul. And here in the first, closing in on two minutes play. Mitchell kicks to Ingles. Conley, the pass to Bogdanovich. Shot clock at six. They need this. Offensive rebound. Jazz passing it around. Here's Mitchell. And a miss there on the triple. Thunder off to a quick start here. Here's Gilgis Alexander. Lays it up off the glass. And don't look now, but they're starting to extend this lead. They're doing it by building it out, step by step, valuing each possession. And the Jazz with possession here, following the score by Oklahoma City. Conley dishes to Gobert. Inside. He can't get that one. Some solid defense from Gallinari. Just a little off to start this game. One for five, looking to find some kind of rhythm. And slam dunk by Gobert. Few players in the league do a better job of finding the open man than Mike Conley. Conley against Paul. And good as it just snugs right down through the net. A lot of enthusiasm to the start of this game. So far, a perfect four for four. Conley finds Bogdanovich. It's hauled in by Adams. Here's Oklahoma City. Big run right now going for him, 11-2. Ferguson, good on the shot. Of the two offenses here tonight, you can tell theirs is just a bit more in sync. They've had better patience, better shot selection so far, but we still have a long way to go. Here's Bogdanovich following the score by Oklahoma City. Ferguson with the rebound. And that's okay. Even though you miss, you had the right guy taking the shot. First quarter of play and uh, just over three and a half minutes in. Gilgis Alexander can't get it to go. Jazz trail by nine. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Mitchell outside. Now the pass to Gobert. 13 feet away. And he hits the jump shot. Gobert's got six points. Oklahoma City leading by seven. Pass to Adams. Alinari surveying the D. Back to Adams. Five to shoot. On deep. And it's Gallinari missing. Jazz have gotten just three of their first nine shots to go down in this game. Mitchell's shot is good. I like that play by Joe Ingles. Doesn't have anything he wants. Keeps the ball moving. Oklahoma City has gone one or two from long range in the first quarter. Here's Ferguson. He's covered by Bogdanovich. Here's Gilgis Alexander. Nice touch on the bank shot. Gilgis Alexander's got his third basket of the night. Oh, this is the kind of start they were hoping for. Now, here's Mitchell. Gilgis Alexander cover. Goes back up. And Gobert with the lay-in. He's got eight. Rudy wanted it more than anyone else. He's going to be around for a long time. Look forward to watching him. And for the Thunder, a lot of the assistant coaches leaving this past summer. Greg, how much of a concern is that for head coach Billy Donovan? Possibly a sign that Donovan could be on the hot seat in OKC. I mean, three consecutive first-round exits. Donovan on the final year of his deal. The clock is definitely ticking. Now, here's Mitchell. Conley with a wide-open look. That three off the mark. The defense got lucky there. That's one you expect him to drain. And he'll shoot free throws here. Clearly fouled on that shot that time. The whistle blowing. 
And the foul goes against Utah. Tough guy to defend. Gallinari with the skill, the knowledge of the game, and gifted physically. He's getting his first free throw attempt of the night right now. That free throw good from Gallinari. Smitty, you played with the U.S. national team. Would you say they allow more physicality in FIBA than they do in the NBA? No, I, I think, Kevin, different parts of the game, there's more physicality, like on the free throw line, boxing out, uh, like going up for rebounds. They li let a lot more than we're used to go. But usually the NBA players adjust, and they find their way. Oh, and he hits them both. When Gordon Hayward left the Jazz three summers ago, some expected a rebuild. Instead, they hit gold with Donovan Mitchell and kept on trucking. Not watching the line there. That'll be a backcourt violation. And first time of the game called for Oklahoma City. And the heartbreak over losing Hayward. Short-lived, but the Jazz still needed to learn from it. Very important that the Jazz retain the stars they developed I think there were some lessons learned along the way. Let's take a look at the players who were the best on the glass a season ago. Fourth, Rudy Gobert. What a season he had in the paint. I mean, his rebounding numbers, really mind-boggling. Who wouldn't love to have a guy like that? Here's Schroeder. Gilgis Alexander surveying the D. Down low. Tries it from nine. And it's wide right. Hits off the rim. Jazz trail by seven. And that's a foul called on Shea Gilgis Alexander. That's foul number two for him. And Oklahoma City making a change here. Noel's checked in. Conley against Schroeder. Conley kicks to Mitchell. The offensive rebound. Here's Gobert. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. Growing before our eyes, the confidence of Gobert. Comfortable doing a little of everything now. Utah shooting their first free throws of this one. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First free throw is good. A defense unto himself. Rudy Gobert regarded by his team as the Utah Jazz version of Bill Russell. Looking at who's out there now for the Jazz. Boys and Eels checked in for Joe Ingles. And it's Dante Exum in for Donovan Mitchell. Here's Schroeder. Adams trying to free himself up. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Not one to back down inside. Schroeder likes to get right into the teeth of the defense. Jazz trail by eight. And Smitty, the standing reach of Gobert, nine foot seven inches. He's around the rim before he leaves his feet. Yes, Kevin, the most efficient shots in basketball are dunks and layups. And he makes them hard to come by. And you look back at that 2013 draft, just call it the year of the sleeper Euros. Giannis Antetokounmpo taken 15th, and this guy, Rudy Gobert, selected with the 27th pick. Shooting two. The first one falls. And, you know, Greg, hindsight always being 20-20. But Greek Freak and Gobert probably go first and second in that 2013 draft. Yeah, and Stephen Adams probably top four. Uh, the common thread, all of them play a hard-nosed style, not something that's always associated with foreign-born players. But they're erasing that perception. And Gobert drops them both. The Thunder leading by six. 
Pass to Muscala. Alinari outside. Here's Schroeder. Busts the J after the KG pass fake. And for Dennis Schroeder, that's a shot the defense will give him because of his ability to blow by people. Moutier. And that's good. A nice job in the glass as they pick up two on the second effort. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. Now, here's Schroeder. Alinari outside. Oklahoma City moving it around. Schroeder passes to Muscala. The three, four on the shot clock. And it's Schroeder missing. Jazz trail by six. Here's Exum. One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. For his size, Dante Exum has a lightning quick first step. That really sets him apart. Schroeder against Moutier. There's Noel. Gobert with the block. And he recovers it. And it's Noel missing. What a defensive play. Gets the stop and does it without fouling. Exum kicks to Moutier. to Exum. Three-pointer on the way. Rebound by Muscala. The Thunder leading by four. Here's Noel. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. It goes on Ed Davis. The emphasis on freedom of movement, less grabbing and holding on the perimeter, Steve, has made some players almost impossible to defend. Yeah, James Harden, because he likes to be physical, and is how can you not guard him without being physical in return. Steph Curry, because he gets the opening shoot shots. Lillard, Kyrie, Devin Booker, Giannis, Kevin Durant for sure. It's hard to guard these guys because they're so good on the offensive end. That's good from Noel. Jeff Green is checked in for Utah. So he gets them both. The Jazz this summer had a lot of flexibility. That also meant a lot of decisions to make. Stick with what you have or try to revamp. Passes it to O'Neal. Noel against Green to the left wing. Here's Moutier, and Moutier throws it down. And that's a special play coming from the one spot. You know, his passing can take a backseat for that dunk. Wow! It just shows you the versatility. This guy can do a lot of different things for you. Woo -wee. It's good. And the Jazz looking to add more shooting and free agency. They wanted snipers at any position. Also more shot creation alongside Donovan Mitchell. We'll see how they will do. Here's Green. Gallinari making his last shot. Davis dishes to Moody in. to Davis. The basket good off the assist from Moutier. A lost art in this game. Terrific bounce pass. Oklahoma City leading by four. Schroeder finds Muscala. And there's the pass to Noel. Now Schroeder from outside the arc and Davis pulls it down. Here's Moutier. Utah gets it back in the corner. O'Neal with it. Back to Davis. Tires from deep. Thunder with the rebound. Gallinari's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Bounce pass. Schroeder. On the wing, Robertson. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. Jazz trail by four. Past O'Neal. One ten left here in the first quarter. Kicks it to Green. The fadeaway. 
It's rebounded by Oklahoma City. Gallinari's got his fifth rebound in this one. Muscala, the pass to Noel. Gallinari dishes to Robertson. Pass to Schroeder. Fires for three. And a bit of a battle here for the ball. The official signals a jump ball here. Utah with the ball. And so it's Moody with it. He'll bring it up for Utah. Trailing by four. Passes to Exum. Now here's Moody. This is to Davis. Exum kicks to O'Neal. The Jazz with another miss. The Thunder leading by four. Stolen by Exum. The drive by Green. And that comes off the assist by Exum. A tall guard who can see over the defense. Exum with no trouble locating the open teammate. Here's Schroeder. At the end of one, a closely contested game so far. Oklahoma City out in front. They lead by a bucket. And we'll get the second quarter underway on the other side of this break. Chris Paul, an elite defensive player, uh, a student of the game for sure, talks about his knack for making a lot of steals, forcing turnovers. Uh, the steals thing is just something that I've always had a knack for doing, and just, uh, I think it's because I watch so much basketball. Well, you hear about the importance of watching film, Greg. It reveals itself in many ways. And learning guys' habits. What they like to do gives them a knack for when to go after steals without hurting his team. And it's been a pretty even game here after one quarter of play. What stands out to you from Oklahoma City in this one? And just they've gotten to the line with tremendous consistency here through the first period. They just look hungrier out there. They don't mind taking the pounding. Exum is out there with Emmanuel Moutier. Then it's O'Neal. Then there's Green. And it's Davis in at the center, locking down the middle. That's the group right now for Utah. Now here is Davis. Moutier with the ball. Behind the back and lays it in. Moutier's got six points. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed ten straight points in the paint. The pass to Paul. Here's Moreland. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. When you look at the luxury tax structure, Smitty, it's now more expensive than ever to maintain a championship contending roster. Yeah, it is, and I think it's the choice of a lot of these organizations. Some owners want, they want to do it, some don't, but I think if you want to win a championship, you're going to have to open up your checkbook. And the first one at the line is good. A different look for Utah. Bogdanovich comes in for Royce O'Neal. And Donovan Mitchell subbed in for Dante Exum. And then for Oklahoma City, Terrence Ferguson's checked in for Robertson. And Gilgis Alexander is subbed in for Dennis Schroeder. He hits both from the strike. There's a built-in respect for coaches who played in the NBA. The Jazz, Quinn Snyder, never made it that far. But as a point guard, he helped Duke make three Final Four appearances. Now, here's Mitchell, and it's blocked. And it's out of bounds. The Jazz able to retain possession here. Steven Adams, he's checked in for the Thunder.
and they call an illegal screen here. And now a look at the upcoming schedule for the Utah Jazz. They'll face off against Anthony Davis and the Los Angeles Lakers. And then on Saturday, they'll tip off a homestand starting with the Sacramento Kings. Smitty Snyder, also an All-American in high school, two-time Washington State Basketball Player of the Year in high school. Led Mercer Island to a state title and then experienced coaching in college, the G League, and abroad. He's a lifer, and he's been around the game far and wide. And we're a little over a minute and a half into the second quarter of action. Now, Moutier, he has six. And with that, the Thunder lead is cut down now to just two points with that basket for Mitchell. I don't know what's happening defensively, but they're not putting up any resistance. Hall finds Gilgis Alexander. They double him with Mitchell. He can't hit that time. So Utah will take it the other way. Fast break. Here we go. Bogdanovich, no luck. And well, he's going to have some explaining to do on the sidelines about why he took that shot. Low percentage chance. If it's not there, give up the rock. Trust your teammates. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, coming into the 2017 draft, Donovan Mitchell wasn't sure he was ready for the NBA. Mitchell said, I worked out in the summer with Paul George and Chris Paul. They were the ones who convinced me to keep my name in the draft. They said, look, you're good enough. Just go out there and show it. And Kevin, through a couple of seasons in Utah, that's exactly what Mitchell has done. He has made an instant impact on the NBA and the Jazz. DA, thank you. And Green's become a dependable three-point threat. If you don't get a hand in his face, he can certainly knock those down. Moreland and the foul called on Donovan Mitchell that's foul number two for him his second foul in as many quarters we'll see if he backs off or stays aggressive Utah's on defense they trail by one Paul with the buckets the concentration and the body control of CP3 possesses is just astonishing Here in the second quarter, about three minutes played. And so it's Mitchell who brings up the ball for Utah. Outside, Green. Outside, Conley. Lock at six. The wide open look here for Ingles. And they're unable to get the tying basket there. Paul with the ball. Now defended by Mitchell. You know, these are the guys you need to be aware of if you don't want your pocket pit. <laughs> Here are last season's steals. Third is Chris Paul. He showed such tremendous defensive instincts. Trust me, nobody wanted him guarding them last year. And that one falls for Paul. No wasted trips at all. They're taking care of business at the line. And Utah making a change here. Go Bears checked in. And Paul drills both of them. We've seen him put a lot of pressure on the defense and then cash in at the line. Conley against Paul. And here is Conley. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. The shot will not fall. Paul with the defensive effort. And you look at the way Steven Adams has developed his offense the last few years. It's been a huge boost for this team. He has always been a great defender, but now he is an important cog on this team in terms of scoring. Jazz trail by seven. Conley the pass to Mitchell. 
Ingles kicks to Mitchell. Another miss by Utah. And with Adams in his offense, you forget how young he is. And big men, sometimes they just take a little longer to find their path in the NBA. And Adams has certainly found his. I remember him being in mostly to screen and rebound when he was a rookie, but look how far his game has come. Oklahoma City leading by seven. Paul goes in to the middle. It's tipped, and the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Conley. And now a chance to take a look at the numbers for Gilgis Alexander. Last season's performance for him averaged about 11 points a game, three assists, and three rebounds. Nothing about his numbers really jump out at you, but he'll come up with a timely play or two every game. He understands his role. He accepts it. He's one of those guys who doesn't need the ball to be effective. And here is Gilgis Alexander following the three-pointer by Donovan Mitchell. And Paul gets it to go in. Defending Chris. This is where it gets frustrating. He finds a way to beat you. Now, here's Mitchell. He's got seven. Has to go bare. Back to Mitchell. And the basket is good, and he's got a chance here for one more at the line. What a game for him so far. He started out strong in that first quarter and has only turned it up from there. Really a sponge. Donovan Mitchell watches a ton of film, accepts coaching, and applies it. A big part of his rise to stardom. Find the lane. Find the lane. One shot. Free throw drops for Mitchell. And the early success of Mitchell speaks to his ability to absorb and take coaching. Yes, credit that coaching staff putting him in position to succeed, helping him also to develop. His decision-making is growing game by game. Now here's Paul. Yeah, that, that's got them over the limit with a lot of time still left. They're going to have to tone it down or they may end up giving up a lot of free throws here. So far, he's hit all of his shots at the foul line, going four for four. And last season, 86% from the line. So he's always had that calm presence at the line, no matter the situation. And so he makes both from the line. One of the most vocal players in this league, CP3 is known as a tremendous leader. Conley with it. Still looking for his first bucket in this one. And slam dunk by Gobert. And he is built to be an alley-oop threat. Long arms, terrific athlete. He went and got that one. Paul finds Adams. And here is Gilgis Alexander. Ingles covering. Gilgis Alexander, good. Gilgis Alexander's got 12 points in the game. And that's what the pump fake's there for. Get your man off his feet and drive right around him. Conley against Paul. Gobert the pass to Mitchell. Nice ball movement by Utah. Six on the shot clock. Back to Conley. A three. Utah the rebound. Ingles dishes to Gobert. Back to Ingles. Goes up again. And with that, the Thunder lead is cut down now to just three on the bucket from Gobert. What a game for Rudy. We don't expect this every night, but it's an encouraging sign. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. Well, it's a player's league, but certainly coaching has its place. Yeah, if that weren't the case, you wouldn't see so many coaching changes in the offseason. And checking out some numbers for Gobert. Coming off a terrific season. First in shooting percentage. Third in blocks. And one of the league's most ferocious rebounders. Always working. He was top five in that category. And last year, he really was the poster boy for scoring efficiency. You could count on one hand the number of bad shots he took. Now, here's Gilgis Alexander. 
12 points for him. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. It's going to be on Donovan Mitchell. And you can see Shea Gilgis Alexander thinking out there in a good way. He really studies every situation. That free throw, no good. And for Shea Gilgis Alexander, his size at the point guard spot is a huge bonus for him. Allows him to switch on to most other players on defense when dealing with picks. Exum, he's checked in for Donovan Mitchell. And Oklahoma City also making a switch. Noel's checked in. And he sinks the second. And one of the reasons they targeted Gilgis Alexander was because of his size. Big guards aren't easy to find, Kevin, and they help coaches' defensive schemes. Every team looks to get a switch into a bad defensive matchup. If your PG isn't an option, the offense has to work that much harder. Here's Ferguson. No good with the layup. There is the value of great rim protection without fouling, forcing the miss. They get it again. Gobert, and he uses the glass on the layup. Gobert's got 17. A much more physical player now than when he first entered the league. Gobert powering it home. Here's Gilgis Alexander. Utah with the rebound. Even though he missed it, this is the exact play your offense is designed to produce. And it's out of bounds to the Jazz as Utah retains possession. And the Thunder with some changes. Molinari comes in for Terrence Ferguson. And Dennis Schroeder subbed in for Paul. it loose. Gilgis Alexander with the steal. Here's Schroeder. Here's Adams. And he makes good on the layup. Adams has got four points now in the quarter. As the game has gone along, they've gotten more and more aggressive on the backboard. Now, here's Exum. Guarded closer. Now that we have a chance, let's go to the 2K leaderboard and reveal last season's top shot blockers. Rudy Gobert, third. And shot blocking is the element of the game that I think he cares about the most. That's where he puts in that effort and energy. Shooting two. And he knocks down the first one. The point guard out of Australia, Dante Exum, is a rare physical specimen. Reason why he has great length at that point guard position. Great size. O'Neal's checked in for the Jazz. Andre Robertson, he's checked in for Oklahoma City. Alinari on the wing, and it's going to be out of bounds. The Thunder will retain possession. You love the pressure he's putting on them. Almost had that steal fantastic anticipation he has active hands even though he doesn't come away with the turnover he's disrupting their offensive flow it's amazing all night he's been out of sync on the offensive end yet they continue to lead and there's Gobert putting it right back in something that's kept this game close is the fact that the rebound stats for both teams are almost identical Alinari on the wing but Trey Rudy Gobert with the rebound. Gobert's got 12 rebounds here tonight. Big time effort. O'Neal misses. The Thunder with the lead. Feeds to Noel. It's stolen by Gobert. Now Exum has to Gobert. The Jazz working the ball around now. Exum finds Gobert down to five on the shot clock. Teardrop shot, and it's Noel with the rebound. Oklahoma City's gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. Here's Robertson, and oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Michael Conley picks one up. Yeah, the defender all over him.
He misses the free throw. Moutier, he's checked in for Mike Conley. And Oklahoma City also making a switch. Muscala's checked in. Second free throw, good. And it's Moutier with the ball. He brings it up for the Utah Jazz. Trailing by two. Noel against Ingle. And the shot goes in from Rudy Gobert. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. Schroeder against Moutier. To the inside. It's stolen by Moutier. And Dennis Schroeder gets the whistle that time. That is his first foul of the game. Jeff Green, he's checked in for Utah. The Jazz shooting at a decent 44% clip here. Pass to Exum. Back to Moutier. Over in the corner, Green. The basket good off the assist from Moutier. Moutier's got three assists in the game. Thunder trailing by three. Schroeder passes to Gallinari. Back to Schroeder. That shot, no good. So Utah will take it the other way. And the shots just continue to say no in terms of falling. It, it's almost as if there's a lid on the hoop for him right now. He still hasn't gotten one to fall in the fourth. There's 138 left in the first half. And it's Gallinari missing. Jazz leading by three. Moutier kicks to Ingles. Back to Moutier. High post, Gobert. Noel on him. The pass to Ingles. Just five to shoot. But they'll get another chance. And they get it back again. I mean, how many rebounds offensively have they had? Everything's going right for them today. It's stolen by Moutier. And the Jazz pushing it up now. Oh, the lob to go pair. That one misses. Great D that time from Dennis Schroeder. Ball's knocked loose. Over in the corner, Moutier. The Jazz again can't hit it. They can trade two for one here. Would be the right move, I believe, right now. Robertson kicks it over to Schroeder. Now the feed to Noel. Gobert with the block. You really have to be careful with Gobert lurking around. He'll send it back. He just doesn't look like himself this quarter. Something's missing. And it also shows you how difficult this game is. He's just a little bit off but it can result in missing everything. Here's Moutier. From deep three-point range, Rudy Gobert. He's feeling it tonight and has been the driving force for the Utah Jams. Between his points and his rebounds, he was a star for him in that quarter. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. With Coach Quinn Snyder, Quinn, what has to happen in the second half? Well, we got to keep getting stops and really just make plays. Make plays on the offensive end and, and be solid defensively. No, no magic. It's a pretty simple game, right, Coach? Thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, David. And we'll be back shortly following halftime to get the third quarter underway. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Ernie Johnson here with Shaq and Kenny and a favorite time of the year as we're halfway through one of the first games of this fresh NBA season. Some incredible work in this one by Rudy Gobert. He had 21 points, two block shots, and one assist. He had a very shaky performance in their last game, but it has not affected him at all tonight. What a tremendous first half he played. And uh, Kenny, what'd you see out there from the Jazz? You have to love a team that pounds the offensive glass. That's going to gain you extra possessions. And check this out. 
Sometimes just having more offensive chances than your opponent wins the basketball game. And big fella, let's get your thoughts on the Thunder. Well, I love that they were forceful at their offensive end. They got the shots they wanted. They played aggressively and got to the line. A strong attacking mindset. I like it. We'll see if they bring the same attitude in the second half, though. That about wraps it up. Time now for the second half of the game. We go to Kevin Harlan for the call. And in that first half, we saw a pretty tight battle. We'll soon find out what sort of adjustments were discussed during the half. Rudy Gobert has been sensational. Well, with a double-double in hand through two quarters, you can just imagine what his stat line will look like at the end of this one. They're asking a lot of him, shouldering the load in a number of areas. You just hope he has enough left at the end. And as we get into this third quarter, as we've seen so far, neither team able to create much separation on the scoreboard yet. And on the floor for Billy Donovan as we get into the second half. Gallinari and Adams, the combo out front. Gilgis Alexander out there with Paul, and it's Ferguson in at the three spot. The result of Paul's awareness of everything around him gets a nice look inside. And so it's Conley bringing up the ball for the Jazz. They lead by one. Pat Danovich wide open. And that one falls coming off Conley's feet. Bogdanovich has got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. And over the course of his career, Mike Conley taking on more and more of the leadership man. He's embraced it, Kevin. And he said letting his hair down was a way of letting go and just being confident in himself. Now here's Paul. Four on the clock. Here's Ferguson. Come on, come on. Gobert pulls it in. Jazz leading by four. Here's Ingles. Banked in off the glass. They thought Ingles would be looking for the jumper. Instead, he puts his head down and makes a play. Conley against Paul. Oh, yes, he did. Five up and five down for him so far. You don't see the finger roll that much anymore, but when you do, it's always a creep. Guys, some great passing from him. Yeah, everybody's touching it, and you're starting to see the assists pile up because the rhythm is on display offensively. And that'll be Oklahoma City's ball as it goes out of bounds. These are the players who had the most success from deep last season. Fifth best, going out. The bucket must have looked three feet wide to him last year. I mean, very deserving in terms of that spot among the league leaders from three. Right around a minute and a half played here in the third quarter. Gobert with the block. And here is Conley. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring yet from him. He dishes it to Gobert. He kicks it to Moody. Shot clock at five. Launches a three. And the Jazz, another three. Three straight to begin this half. Couldn't have drawn it up any better. Under trailing by seven. Here's Gilgis Alexander. Gobert with the block. And now Utah, fast break. Bogdanovich, no what? Get that weak stuff out of here. That's embarrassing. Paul outside. Stolen by Michael Conley. Now the dish to Bogdanovich. And that one falls coming off Conley's feet. Bogdanovich has got the lead up to nine now for the Jams. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. Last season, Mike Conley became the Grizzlies' all-time leader in points scored. He was already first in assists, steals, and three-pointers. Ed Davis has checked in for Utah. Mitchell comes in for Moutier. Well, a chance here to check out Chris Paul. Great showing for him last season. Third in assists. And his ability to pressure and disrupt defensively was obvious. He ranked third in the league 
and steals. And as you mentioned, top three in assists last year. He did a great job of setting the pace, finding the open man, making the simple delivery. Count it. And Smitty, when it's all said and done, Mike Conley's jersey has to go in the Memphis Raptors. Absolutely. Over a decade in a Grizzlies uniform, he helped lead them to the best years in franchise history. So it's the Jazz now. The Thunder making the shot. And here we go. Fast break. Paul's got it with the tip. And that's how you do it, guys. Ball pressure and then get some run out. Jazz leading by five. Mitchell finds Gobert. Third quarter action in just under three and a half minutes have gone. Conley tries again. And Adams sends it back. Gobert down low. Adams defending. Nice shot by Gobert. Gobert has got 23. Thunder trailing by seven. And the official signaled the backcourt violation. Not very careful there. Eric Moreland's checked in for Gallinari. Now here is Davis. Conley with it to the paint. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. When Gobert gets in deep, that's often your best option is to wrap him up and send him to the line. This is his third trip to the free throw line in the game. And, and you know, you'll take what he can give you from the free throw line. Looking at his numbers, just really not one of his strengths. Shooting in the low 60s last season. And the first one drops. And Go Bear drops them both. Thunder trailing by nine. Al Paul, 16 points for him. Adams down low. Go bear on him, and that one drops. And it's six points for Steven Adams. Nicely done. They continue to attack inside, and that's 10 points in a row in the paint. To the wing on the left. Here's Gilgis Alexander. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. Well, a look at that 2018 Clippers draft pick and Gilgis Alexander. His incredible size at the point guard spot makes him one of the more intriguing players from that class. Shooting two. First one falls for him. And last season with Gilgis Alexander, Greg, you could see what he was capable of with his length. Well, he is just so difficult to slow up when he's running downhill at a defender. Already a plus defender in his offense coming along. He could be a scary figure at that point guard position. Now here is Davis. Here is Conley. High post, Gobert, Adams on him. Six to shoot. Mitchell left side. And it's good with time running down on the shot clock. Mitchell's got 12. Whatever they did right in the first half defensively, we're not seeing it now. Here's Ferguson, covered by Conley. Here's Paul. Yes, once again, it remains perfect. Six attempts and six hits. They are just killing them on the interior. Oh. 
And it's Conley with the ball for Utah. Their biggest lead of the game was nine. Kicks it to Mitchell. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. And the Utah Jazz, not exactly a magnet for big-name free agents, Greg, but for their young star, Donovan Mitchell, it has been a perfect fit. You know, they needed a score. He's played big minutes from day one and, and really thrived in that role. And Mitchell drops them both. Impeccable from the line since halftime. Now, here's Gilgis Alexander. Covered by Mitchell. Here's Paul. And a great assist by Gilgis Alexander as that one goes in. Gilgis Alexander's got three assists tonight. Here is Conley. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Has to go bare. Nice ball movement by Utah. Six on the shot clock. Here's Mitchell. Another miss by Utah. Under trailing by five. High arcing shot, and the layup is good. Gilgis Alexander's got six in the quarter. This is where you'll often find Gilgis Alexander. He definitely does work in the paint. And the Jazz with possession here. scanning the floor over Paul here's Gobert Adams a nice D great defensive effort just saved a basket you know what this is why you never give up on a play you don't know what's going to happen and the Jazz pushing it up now puts it up from 12 Davis Davis on the follow and the Jazz lead by five. Challenging the defense at the rim. Something he does very well. Excellent tip in. Now a timeout called by Oklahoma City. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, tampering is a touchy subject, but it's a word we're hearing more often. Teams want to retain their star players, but they know that there's always talk during a season. Now, teams can only express interest in a player when he hits free agency. Players can talk amongst each other freely all season. Star players like LeBron James are tied into their front offices. And some people wonder if there's much of a difference between what the player says and this team is thinking. Kevin? Good point, David. Thank you. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Outside Bogdanovich. Back to Mitchell. Lock at six from past the arc. And again, it's the Jazz from deep. First three of the half, second of the game. Can he heat up? Now, here's Gilgis Alexander, covered by Mitchell. Three-pointer. Gilgis Alexander can't get it to go. And the Jazz pushing it up now. A pull-up. The Thunder pull it in. The Wizards on the road to face them after this game. That game marks the first half of a quick two-game homestand. Impressive night for Shea Gilgis Alexander. Scoring and doing it in a variety of ways. Utah leading by four. Outside green. It's stolen by Schroeder. And here's the fast break. There's Noel. He feeds it to Schroeder. And it goes down two points. Schroeder's got his third basket of the night right there. Great pass to set your man up with a high percentage look. Conley, the pass to Mitchell. Davis against Adams. And the whistle blows as the basket counts. And a three-point play chance right here. One free throw coming up. Hustle points count just like any others. That's a great play. The Jazz have shot 9 of 11 at the free throw line. 
in talking about last season, this team hit just 74% of their free throws. I'm sure they were hoping for better than that. The Jazz making a switch here. Jackson's checked in. Thunder trailing by five. And here's Schroeder. He's got six. There's Noel. He doesn't hit that one. Great tee that time from Green. Inside. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. It's going to be on Nerland's Noel. The Jazz have been getting it done at the line. Ten for 12. That one is off. That one misses. Oklahoma City's gone 0-2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Now, here's Robertson. To the left side wing. Just five on the clock. Here's Gilgis Alexander. The putback. And it's Adams on the follow. They're getting on a roll inside. Their last three field goals have come from the paint. Exum with it. Pass to Bogdanovich. And it's Noel with the rebound. Noel's got seven rebounds in the game. Gilgis Alexander. And there it is for him. Now just a one-point Utah lead. Despite his slim frame, Shea Gilgis Alexander is showing enough strength to take the hit and complete the play. Here's Exum. This is to Mitchell. Adams against Davis. Let's use this break for a quick look at the squads that really made it happen on the fast break last season. Fifth on the list, the Thunder. I mean, this is such a tough team to deal with. You see the numbers. They would just push the ball at every opportunity. And he can't get the first one. A different look for Utah. Joe Ingles, he's checked in for Bogdanovich. And Emmanuel Moutier subbed in for Donovan Mitchell. Mike Muscala is checked in for Oklahoma City. Alinari comes in for Shea Gilgis-Alexander. And he's good on the second. Here's Schroeder. He's got six. One fifty-seven left to play in the third. Robertson kicks to Adams. Back to Robertson. For the tie, tipped away. He had stolen by Ingles. Three on three. No one near Moutier as he lets it go. Another miss by Utah. And so it's Dolinari with it. He'll bring it up for the Thunder. Robertson can't hit. And Andre Robertson is going to pick up a foul. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. Oh, oh, no. He's the last guy you want to put on the line. You can just about book the points every time he steps up there. And both free throws good for Green. Because he knows he makes a living at the line, he invites contact and sometimes even initiates it. Schroeder finds Muscala. Alinari on the wing. Back to Muscala. Takes the assist and lays it in. Picked out the pass nicely. Muscala's got his second bucket of the night. Utah leading. Moutier with the bounce pass. Davis down low. Adams defending. Kept alive. Back to Moutier. Jacks up a three. The shot. No good. Oklahoma City's gone 0-2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Alinari dishes to Schroeder. 
Adams outside. Back to Robertson for the tie. It's good. This game is all even. And they've had assists now on their last three baskets. High post, Davis. Passes it to Green. And Andre Robertson is going to pick up a foul. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus, and we'll go to the line to shoot two. Free throw drops for Green. And the former Hoya Green, a, a ranging forward who can both score and defend from all areas of the floor. Good on both. Oklahoma City trailing. Two second difference between shot clock and game clock. Winner passes to Muscala. Schroeder against Moody and a Schroeder missing and I'm sure next time he sits down coach is going to have a few choice words for him with that shot selection and you know what he knows it you have to try to play within the system or you're going to come away with empty possessions and we just finished the third quarter and we've got a tight ball game here Jazz lead by two and right after this we'll bring you the start of the final quarter right here on 2k sports and it's time now to bring you our state farm assist of the game and how about the floor generalship right here. I mean, showing us why they're always in good hands when he's the man in charge. So many good point guards in this league. So much responsibility comes with that position. That was a smart, smart play. Well, what a terrific game it's been so far with this fourth quarter sure to bring more pressure-packed basketball. They've got Exum. Davis is out there with Joe Ingles. And there's Emmanuel Moutier. And it's Gobert in at the five, roaming the paint. That's the group right now for Utah. And the shot goes in. Dante Exum is a really ambitious player who does not shy away from contact on his drives. Schroeder finds Muscala. Oklahoma City moving the ball around. Trying to get open is Robertson. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. It goes on Ed Davis. First free throw is good. He's perfect from the line this time. And even though they're down, they are putting on a show at the free throw line. Now, Moutier on the pass to Ingles. And they pick up two. There's the work Ingles has put into his strength and conditioning. Takes the hit and still able to convert. Schroeder looking around.
feeds it to Adams. Clock at four. Takes the three. A rebound by the Jams. Davis has got ten rebounds here tonight. So active. Exum kicks to Ingles. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Gallinari. Ferguson's checked in for the Thunder. Chris Paul comes in for Robertson. About a minute and a half into the fourth quarter now. To the middle, Davis. And it's Davis with the jam. Great game for him. Double-double down. Ten points and ten rebounds. Now here's Paul. He's covered closely. Molinari dishes to Muscala. Molinari attacking. Davis with some nice deep. And his pure defensive effort changed that shot from an easy one to a tough one. And you know, technically, it's a high percentage look. But this is why we play the game. Schroeder against Moutier. Five on the clock. Now, here's Exum. He's guarded closely. Beat the shot clock, but it's off the mark. Trying to finish out the game strong. You have to recognize who has the hot hand and get him the ball. Ferguson misses. Utah leading by six. Here's Exum. He dishes it to Davis. Got a hand on it. The second effort. Thunder have gone 0 of 3 to start the fourth quarter. Some tough offensive sets. They want to turn it around. Yeah, right now you just need a bucket to get some momentum. Shooter passes to going up. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. And Smitty, one thing I like about Gallinari, he's doing more things on the court as he ages. I totally agree. He used to be out there only to shoot, but that hasn't been the case for a while now. Still scores, but his rebounding has improved, and he's done a good job of driving and drawing fouls. Well, last season, a bit of a renaissance for Gallinari. And the way Gallinari stepped up last season, Kevin, was a big reason the Clippers were as strong as they were. Now on the other side of 30, he's been playing some of his best basketball here of late. Gallinari hits them both. And this is where you want to see Gallinari if you're the coach. A knockdown shooter at the free throw line. Conley finds Bogdanovich. Shoots from the right block. They get it back. Count it. And hard work on the glass. Once again, guys, they put a lot of effort and focus on the backboard. Now here's Paul. Tight defense on him. Malinari outside. He had stolen by Ingles. And Exum with a clear path to the hoop. And finished off by Exum. That's quality basketball. Turn him over on the defensive end. Ingles aware. Kicks the ball ahead. And here is Paul. Pass to Noel. Schroeder outside. Gobert with the block. Here's Ingles. A second chance effort. And it's finished off inside by Gobert. Gobert's got the lead up to 10 now for the Jams. And so it's Paul with it. Bringing it up for Oklahoma City. Alinari outside. Schroeder right side over Conley and again Oklahoma City no good picked his pocket the drive by Paul there's Noel another shot two free throws coming up and they call the shooting foul really uh, the right play defensively if you can't block Force him to the line. Take a break. Take a break. Two 
shot. That free throw, no good. And Utah making a change here. Mitchell's checked in. And Oklahoma City also making a switch. Shea Gilgis Alexander checked in for Dennis Schroeder. Good on the second free throw. Utah with the ball. They've only given up five points here in the fourth quarter. Gobert down low. Noel on him. Gobert can't hit. I'm not sure the defense affected that shot. That was just a blown gimme. Ferguson, the pass to Noel. Here's Ferguson, defended by Gobert. And again, no good by Oklahoma City. Jazz leading by nine. Here's Ingles. It's deflected. Here's Ferguson, covered by Mitchell. Gilgis Alexander can't get it to go. The Jazz have gone 6 of 13, so just about 46% on their field goal attempts here in the quarter. Come on, come on. And out of bounds as the Thunder gain possession. You want unselfishness? but you also need to keep it under control. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Here's Paul, and Noel throws it down. That's why you never quit battling on the offensive glass. And that's a nice reward for his effort. Uh, the flush, perfect. Working hard, beating everyone to the ball. He does this night in and night out. This is what you do when your opponents try to take away the three and the painted area. To the inside, it's stolen by Gobert. And now Utah, fast break. Oh, and the dunk by Mitchell. What you love about Donovan Mitchell, not only does he explode into his moves, he finishes with authority. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. It's going to be on Rudy Gobert. And he makes the first. And that's good as he hits both of his shots. Utah leading by nine. Outside Conley. Bogdanovich looking around. Back to Mitchell. It's deflected and stolen by Noel. Second chance shot. And he battles for the ball and gets the second chance bucket. Relentless on the offensive glass. And then you love the finish. Outside Conley. Now, here's Bogdanovich. Not a lot of room. No good from 11 feet. Under trailing by seven. Gilgis Alexander kicks to Gallinari. Ball outside. Back to Gallinari. Over Ingles. And he can't bank that one in. Ball against Conley. On the wing, Ingles. They grabbed their own miss. And they funk this quarter. He's trying to shoot his way out of it. Conley against Paul. Down low. Noel. Again with the block. A, a defensive stalwart so far. That's six block. Greg protecting the rim. Love the hustle. Conley finds Gobert. Outside Bogdanovich. Just five to shoot. Fires it up. The Jazz with another miss. Thunder trailing by seven. Here's Paul. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. Chris Paul is just a master of drawing contact on shots. free throw missing and the Thunder making a change here Adams checked in no luck that time either and lost his touch right there didn't see that coming 
usually when he's hot, he stays hot. And when you can't get anything to fall, it definitely gets in your head. And his rhythm, it's been way off. The goal now might be to get him something easy at the rim so he can just see the ball go in through the net, and that helps. And the first few seasons in the NBA, not an easy time for Terrence Ferguson. Young Wings have their ups and downs, but the franchise still very much believes in his talent. So he hits both. And with Ferguson, the fans can be hard on him. They're expecting more. But, Greg, it's going to take time for him. You know, Ferguson has already made big strides with his defense. The shot and consistency will come. But, but the fans will have to be patient with him. Utah calls timeout. And they're committing an awful lot of fouls here. And not of the good variety. You don't want to give up easy layups. Sure, but it's been a non-stop parade to the foul line. And now let's present our Jordan player of the game, Rudy Gobert. And what an amazing ball game we've seen from him. It's been a one-man show worth the price of admission all by itself. There wasn't anything he couldn't do on that court tonight. He gets a chance now to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. During that last break, Kevin, I got a chance to hear what Quinn Snyder said to his team. He said, keep grinding. We're in good shape. Things aren't always going to go perfectly. Don't let that slow you down. Let's just stick to what got us here. Kevin will see if they can build on this lead. Here's Gilgis Alexander. And denied, he sends it right off the glass. Trying to end the drought, a nice shot by Bogdanovich. What a turnaround for him since the half. More aggressive and more effective. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Oklahoma City moving the ball around. Adams with it, now defended by Gobert. Ferguson, the pass to Paul. And now Utah, fast break. Here's Bogdanovich, trains the jumper to finish the break. Bogdanovich has got 11 in the second half. Thunder trailing by nine. Now here's Paul, out left to the wing. Here's Gilgis Alexander. And a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Paul's got three assists in the game. Conley with it. Pass to Gobert. On the wing, Ingles. From deep. Second shot opportunity, and it's finished off inside by Gobert. Gobert's got 29 in the game. Gobert bouncing off defenders, took a ton of contact, and still scored. Over to the left wing. Here's Gilgis Alexander, and he drops in the way up off the glass. He's got 29 points. You know he's pulling his weight, but they still find themselves behind. And so it's Conley bringing up the ball for the Utah Jams. And Chris Paul picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. One thirty-two left to play in the final quarter. Back to Gobert. Outside Conley. Shot clock at six. Back to Gobert. And the layup falls. Gobert's got six here in this quarter. Nice job by Rudy Gobert. What concentration on that shot by the big fella. Out to the right wing. Gilgis Alexander passes to Ferguson. A shot off that time. And his pure defensive effort changed that shot from an easy one to a tough one. And you know, technically, it's a high percentage look. But this is why we play the game. 
shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. It's going to go on Boyan Bogdanovich. So the first one drops, and that brings them within eight. Both shots good from the strike. They're in good position here to ride it out. Well, certainly, if they just play smart, this game's over. Here's Gobert, and contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. And to begin his career, team's happy to send Gobert to the free throw line. His free throw shooting has been a focus. He doesn't hit the first, and that way's the one they really want. He's got one more, though. does get the second one and that stretches their lead to eight and not as productive a trip as you would like but they're still in a pretty comfortable position call no, against come out to the wing here's Gilgis Alexander and again no good by Oklahoma City the shot and game clock separated by four and the ball goes out of bounds last touch by Ingles Unforced errors. These are the kinds of things that break momentum. There's 21 seconds left in the game. Batten's shot is off. Now Green. And so it's Utah with the win. A confident win, and one where they clearly showed the greater effort. Yeah, I mean, it was a solid performance, uh, particularly here at home. And I think they built off that edge of being here and, and playing with just a little more confidence than their opponent. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thank you, Kevin. With Dante Exum, Dante, still a young guy in this league. What do you want to focus on with your development? Um, you know, I think it's just staying in the defensive end. You know, sometimes in the heat of the play, you kind of lose sight of it. And it's just about staying in there and just helping your teammates out. So, A very young guy on a very good team. Thank you, Dante. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that about does it for the first game of the new NBA season. Now for Greg Anthony, Steve Smith, and David Aldridge. This is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA here on 2K Sports. And we'll see you next time.